Evidence and Investigation, Lesson 1, How Are Crimes Solved? First, this word forensics. This is the science that is used to help solve a crime. So forensic, science, research, criminal, evidence, technology, fingerprints, analyzing. These are all related. Proof, murder, health, all of those words. How do detectives use forensics to fight crime? Either with a friend or on your notebook or just out loud, answer this question. How do detectives use forensics to fight crime? What do they do? Beyond a reasonable doubt. Using special techniques and tools, detectives link suspects to evidence found at the crime scene. An officer's duty is to prove a person innocent until proven guilty. Evidence must be 100% linked to a suspect for that to be true. If there's any inaccuracy or potential for you to be wrong, linking a person cannot be accomplished. Evidence is used to prove without a doubt that someone has committed a crime. This evidence is presented to a judge during trial by detective or forensics specialist. So you are innocent until proven guilty. That's how our justice system works. This is just fun. This is the introduction to Law and Order. If you've never seen the show, it's a classic. What are the steps to solving a crime? So with post-it notes or just in your notebook or on a document on your computer, write out the steps to solving a crime. Put them in order one step per sticky note. Okay, what are the steps to solving a crime? Pause this video and do that now. You might have three steps, five steps, seven steps. If you have more than 10 steps, maybe that's enough. Okay, here are the steps. One, secure the scene. Before anything, you have to make sure that the scene is secure. Then, prevent contamination. Then, gather and document evidence. Then, process that evidence. Then, gather suspects. Then, link that evidence to the suspects. Then, come to a conclusion, who committed the crime. And finally, Prove it in court. Were your steps similar? Did they follow a linear progression? Did you miss a step? Did you have something that I missed? All interesting questions. Witness. What is a witness? A witness is a person who has observed an event or activity taking place. Are all witnesses always reliable? Facts can easily become muddled and it can be difficult to remember what you have seen if you weren't fully focused. However, with all the discrepancies between witness statements, there will be some commonalities, and these are the facts that police officers will concentrate on. Witnesses can therefore be very helpful in helping solve a crime. So, yeah, witnesses are reliable, but also, no, witnesses aren't reliable. All right, so you're going to study the following scene for 20 seconds. Be observant. Go. Can you recall? Oh no. This is better like this. <gasps> How many taxis were there? What was the color of the Kodak sign? What Broadway show is being advertised? What time is it? And which taxi had its door open? There were three taxis. The Kodak sign was yellow and red. The Broadway show being advertised was rent. It was 350. And the middle taxi had its door open. So. 
you go back and check. There's the middle taxi. It's got its door open. Where's rent? There's rent. That's the show that was being put on. There are one, two, three taxis. Um, what color was the Kodak sign, huh? Kodak, yellow and red. How many did you get right? I mean, I know I showed them for a half second there, so I'm hoping you missed that. Okay, suspects. People can become suspects if they're linked to any witness evidence or evidence found at the crime scene. People may be considered a suspect if the people, the police, have reasonable grounds to believe that they may be connected to a crime. Reasonable grounds could result from past criminal activity, past involvement in similar crimes, as well as associations to victims or other suspects. So these are some of the usual suspects. And then evidence is used to link the suspect to the crime. But it's important that we don't let ourselves jump to conclusions until there's enough supporting evidence to prove that somebody is guilty. Being biased or assuming that someone is guilty before there's enough proof can lead to arresting the wrong person. And it's actually amazing how many wrong people have been arrested in our justice system. It's wild. This is why police take the approach innocent until proven guilty, as it ensures that biased conclusions are not made. If you've ever been in trouble at school, you know how terrible it feels to be assumed guilty when you're not. All right, this is an extra activity, but it's super fun. So I definitely recommend you do it. So you're going to need to focus and count the number of times the players wearing white catch the ball. You're doing this by yourself, but don't, don't get distracted. So you're going to count the number of times the players wearing white catch the ball. This is a test of selective attention. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the basketball. How many passes did you count? The correct answer is 15 passes. But did you see the gorilla? Did you see the gorilla? This video is from research. What? Pretty interesting, right? For use in talks. So there you have it. Investigators need to follow the proper steps in an investigation. Witnesses are reliable, but not that reliable. And your attention is a magical thing. And if you're paying attention to one thing, you might miss a gorilla walking through the hallway. Okay, um, let me know what you thought of that lesson, and let me know whether you saw that gorilla. All the best.